Well, for the first time this season in Allendale, we see jackets all around the field as the temperatures have cooled fairly dramatically. It got up to the low 70s today. Might be a touch less than that right now here at uh, just after 4 p.m. Eastern time. Fairly breezy. The wind out of the east, which is usually a harbinger of some stormy weather to come. But it looks right now like we're going to get through this one without any rain today. Grand Valley won its first game of the season on this field last week against a very stout squad from Bellarmine that Ohio Valley knows well. Last uh, week, Grand Valley had a tough one in this contest. There was a handball right there after Grand Valley had taken a 1-0 lead. Madison Stevens on the penalty kick after the earlier goal. But then Grand Valley comes back a little later across here for Rico Segarra who knocks in what would be the eventual winner. Then in the final 30 seconds, an exciting play here. Tamaya Robinson runs past the defense. They brought everybody up, Bellerman did, including the goaler. Tamaya Robinson's going to win this race. And with just three ticks left on the clock, she fires home an insurance goal, her first college score, as Grand Valley went on to win 3-1. to Grand Valley played again on Sunday, winning rather handily against the University of Missouri-St. Louis, 7 to nothing. Jeff Hostler, the head coach now in his fifth year, Thought his team was much sharper in that game. But Grand Valley has some changes here against this team that was undefeated in the regular season. Made it to the NCAA tournament. Beaten by Chris Tinius and Bellerman last year. 3-0 in their first round game. Grand Valley with two changes up front. Tamaya Robinson injured. She'll probably be out a week. Katie Barron slots in there. And at center forward, Madeline Becker starts for Grand Valley. Ava Cook not in the starting 11 today. Grand Valley's top returning scorer from the 2017 season. And the Lakers are on the move early on, wearing all black, red and white for the Fighting Scots of Ohio Valley from Vienna in West Virginia. That's a great through ball right here. Let's see if Barron can get there. Tough angle for the shot, crossed in front. Grand Valley went a little bit uh, past that one. Tara Learman would have had an opportunity here. Or was it actually Sewall who overran the play slightly? It was Corey Sewall, so Grand Valley Gets an immediate opportunity near the six, unable to score. Here's Learman now the ball for the first time. That's a great ball through to Sawal. Couldn't bring it down with the left foot. And now first bit of possession and only temporary for Ohio University. Shot taken wide there by Grand Valley's overlapping defensive player, Sidney O'Donnell, the sophomore from Novi, Michigan, who started her career at Vanderbilt. And it was a pretty interesting first 60 seconds here for the Lakers who put on some real pressure. Today, this match being officiated by John Crum. He's the man in the middle, the assistant referees, Jim Kroll and Joe Piccioni, who's back. He was here for the Bellarmine game. Not quite sure what the delay is right now here, but the referee has come over to the sideline and he's called over the goalkeeper. I'm not quite sure. Oh, she's got a black shirt on, and that's not acceptable because Grand Valley's wearing all black, and somebody could mistake her for a Laker player. She had something else on during the warm-up. I didn't know, so she's going to have to put on a, a substitutes bib, which she can't be too excited about, but that's the way it's going to go. Usually there would be a completely different color for the goalkeeper. Grand Valley's goalkeeper, Jessica Rattis, today wearing orange, as you will see when... The picture goes down to the other end, but the goalkeeper, Kimberly Mora, the senior, makes the costume change, and we're back at it. Grand Valley on the free kick in the first possession now for Ohio Valley. Montserrat Grau on the ball. Nice possession here. This is Constantina Giano. Giano from Greece. Most of the players are from South and Central America. Nice dispossession there by Rico Segarra, looking ahead for Becker. Becker goes in hard there on Lauren Acosta, the senior, who plays it out for a Grand Valley throw. This is what Grand Valley would like to do, use its depth, tilt the field a little bit. Seth Steinwasher back in central defense today. She played Holder last week a little bit. Bad communication there between Sawall and O'Donnell, and here comes the Scots now. Good ball ahead, a little heavy on the touch for Paula Balbuena, the sophomore from Bogota, Colombia, several players from Colombia on this team. Ohio Valley has players from California to Colombia, from Canada to Chile, but the international that has gotten a lot of attention already in Division II soccer circles, Rico Segarra, who might find herself on the ball shortly here. Here's O'Donnell coming up from left back. 
Looking to take on the defender, goes right around. Gets a touch, and that goes out for a corner for the Lakers. That ball was touched by Hannah Roach, who's playing with her left wrist, heavily bandaged today. Luis Rincon is the coach for Ohio Valley. Grand Valley brings Sagara over. And I don't think Ohio Valley is going to let her get on the ball. Her reputation precedes herself. Now they're going to switch. O'Donnell's going to stay back. If they don't bring a second player up, Grand Valley will play short here. They're doing just enough defending that Cigar, I think, might send this one toward the six. Got a big leg, very good in terms of placement, a little shy with that one. Ball was short to the near post, and Ohio Valley quickly out near the halfway line. This is going to come, though, for Grand Valley's central defender. Actually, it's Mads Hand back there who went down. Referee looked at it and just motioned get back up. Mads Hand thought she was fouled, no doubt about it. Here's Grand Valley on a dispossession here. Player down for Ohio Valley. Referee looked right at it, and now he's uh, stopping the play. And, um, well, Drow got caught in a bad position there. Jeff Hostler looking at this one a little bit suspiciously. I'm surprised the referee stopped the action because two players clashed with their legs. That's not a dangerous play situation. It's not a head injury. She just caught her foot a little bit and stubbed her toe, it looked like to me. You see the collision there, and generally speaking, the referee's not going to stop the play for that. If there's a knock of heads or if there's something much more violent, maybe so. But that looked you know, like it was not too serious, but the player, Rao, who is the Chilean from Santiago, will come off. She'll be substituted, holding her face. I don't know if she cut her nose or what. If they rule this to be a head injury, I think she'll probably be able to get a free return into the game. She's coming over to the sideline. She just got a quick drink, waiting to be waved in by the official, who might take a while before he does that. He's not looking over there right now. Ball's over on the other side. Grand Valley, nice turn there by Learman to Ham, looking in the middle of the field. Becker probably should have gone for that ball. She was waiting for Katie Barron. Back out it comes, Grand Valley again through Learman. Grand Valley will keep it alive through Katie Barron. And now Becker, who's not quite the target. She's only about five feet four. Ava Cook, a much bigger and stronger player in the middle. But Becker is a chaser. She will go after it as she's doing right now. Acosta out to the middle of the yard. Knocked down there by Seth Steinwasher. Took a rough ride. Oh, Sagara nearly pulled off a great move there to get away from two different defenders. That's a good step up by O'Donnell. Great tackle there. Grand Valley showing some grit right at the moment. And finally, Corey Sawal whistled for a foul by John Crum. Seemed pretty benevolent. And finally, the player gets back on. That was Grau. And I don't think that was by accident. I think the referee probably was second guessing his decision to stop play when Grand Valley was in attack. And so maybe to send a little bit of a subtle message he let the player linger on the sideline for probably 30 seconds or so. Here's Learman now, looking to change the play out on the right. Learman picked up there by Mona Medina. Here's Mads Ham now, racing forward. Becker tries to lay it off. That's a nice one, too. Becker's available on the outside. Rico Segarra. Learman scuffed that shot. It comes through to Grand Valley, though, just outside the 18. And now Giano, the Greek player, got a touch. And now Valbuena, but Grand Valley very quickly with two players on. This is better now for the red and white Scots. Sains. Medina. Now Hannah Roach got it through the legs of Corey Sawal. That's a foul going against Ohio Valley. Corey Sawal realized it. Good work back by Grand Valley's winger up front. Corey Sawal. Here's Steinwasher now. Haley Wensloff with a touch. O'Donnell. Nice step through there. O'Donnell's got people with her. This is Sawal. Good one on one player. Sagara thinking about a cross. Shot on. Knocked down Grand Valley with a touch. Can somebody get there for the Lakers? That ball is knocked off the foot of Becker. It will be a goal kick. Well, 
That ball was there for the asking. After the touch from the outside, it was spilled by Mora. What a shot though by Cigar. That ball was moving around in the breeze and goalkeeper didn't feel confident about catching it, parried it away and Grand Valley nearly comes up with the first goal of the afternoon. That's why when you're an attacker, you've got to just follow up and look for that garbage opportunity that'll sometimes present itself as it did right there. Grand Valley a little bit slow there. Good ball now out on the left. Grand Valley with good defensive presence getting back. That was Barron who tracked back for the Lakers. Watch that one sail out of play. So Mads Ham on the throw for Grand Valley. Right in front of the parents and Grand Valley supporters, 22, Haley Wensloff. Freshman from Rochester Hills, just outside of Detroit. Nice move here by O'Donnell. They've done some business with O'Donnell. She's got a chance for Sawal here. Good ball there, can Sawal get there? Got the angle wrong, did Corey Sawal. That one had a little bit more on it than she anticipated. Normally she's gonna get to that one and turn the corner. Roach hands that ball off. Throw in comes up and it's gonna be taken by Sawal, played out for a Laker throw. O'Donnell, Steinwasher, Sydney O'Donnell again. She's been busy on the ball today. Nice move there, kept it alive. The ball still kept alive by O'Donnell. Chance to cross from the byline. Touched on, Sawal fanned on it. It goes out for a goal kick. That one might have been whistled for offside. I saw Joe Piccioni on the far side waving the flag. Couldn't tell if he was signaling for just goal kick or offside, but he was all the way down to the line to help out. Eight and a half minutes in, no score here today. Grand Valley with good early pressure against Ohio Valley, which has two ties and a win. Look at this play by Becker on the kick out from the goalkeeper. She'll pick this one up in front of Maddie Becker. That's what Becker can give you. I think she's going to be a valuable player in this team eventually, maybe as a second half substitute when Grand Valley's got the lead and they're trying to just keep the pressure on. You'll see her play up front there to just harass the back lines of teams that Grand Valley's playing. That's very nice from Mads Ham. Now Sagara, the player Grand Valley wants to have on the ball. Really didn't want to pull the trigger on that one. No danger in the shot whatsoever. Another claim there by Kimberly Mora. Kimberly Mora is from San Carlos in Costa Rica. Her teammate Anna DaCosta is from the nation's capital, San Jose. Here's Grand Valley again. Oh, it's a great ball through this time to Sawal. On her left foot, chance for Sawal. There is goal number one. Great through ball, and Corey Sawal picked it up and drilled it home, and the Lakers move quickly on top. We'll take a look at it again. Look at this presence right here. She held the line, got it set up, went to the right of the goalkeeper, and there's the big smile from Corey Sawal as Grand Valley moves out on top by a score of one to nothing. Sawal had a goal earlier in the season. It's her second of the season. She had a goal and an assist in the game against uh, Bellerman. Well, it's a great ball, too, by Learman that allowed that goal to happen. Super play by the Grand Valley senior, and here comes Ohio Valley on the move. Moving down very smartly is GNO. Little chip in toward Jessica Raddus, and this will be claimed by Grand Valley. And I think that was Barron who came all the way back into the play to help out. Jessica Raddus has not been bothered as of yet. And here's Rico Segarra now. She takes the player off the ball, tried to play it up in the air to herself and got it a little bit away from her. Grand Valley will chase again. O'Donnell. Referee looked at it and said, get up. Didn't like that. Thought it was a dive. He was looking at uh, Giano. This one's not going to get through to Learman this time. Carlos Ring, uh, I should say Luis Rincon, not happy about the lack of call there. And now he's signaling the referee, Mr. Crum, for Rincon to return to his coaching area, which he is well out of at the moment. And if Crum looks over there again, I think he's going to come over and stop play and make sure the uh, coach gets into the technical area. Grand 
Valley playing a little bit softer right now. Becker the only player forward. This is a, a deliberate tactic right now with both Barron and Sawal going back defensively and then Grand Valley looking to hit on the counter. So they're showing a little bit of respect for the ability to score goals that this team probably has. Grand Valley's gonna take it there through Steinwasher. Here's Sagara. Played it up, but Becker had become disconnected from the play, and now Sawal steps in. They don't want Becker to come too far back up the field, but they'd like a little better connection here. This one's gonna run on to O'Donnell. Got it through the legs of the uh, player guarding her, and now to Sagara. Sagara in space, Learman. Learman's got 10 yards in front. She's got Barron on the right. Maddie Becker right in the middle. Held it a little bit too long to Tara Learman. Ham. Knocked down there. That's a foul and a senseless play, really. Ham was not going to be able to make any kind of play there on the ball, and the defender just toppled her over. Instead of Grand Valley losing possession, they get a free kick at the halfway line. And that will be Wensloth that comes back to take it as the band strikes up some music, making some noise. Here's Learman, now Sagara. Sagara looking. This is O'Donnell coming up, the defender from the outside. Better this time from Hannah Roach. But quickly recovering for Grand Valley is Haley DeHaan, the holding midfielder. Here's Sawal again. Slightly heavy on that one as she tried to get back in the middle of the field. Roach. Medina. Good tackle there. Commitment by Learman, but the ball just got away from her a bit. And now Valbuena. Pretty standard 4-3-3 it appears to be for Ohio Valley, but they're not getting much in the way of action in the attacking third right at the moment. They really have not caused any problems for Grand Valley in the first 13 minutes inside the 18 at the other end of the field. A little better this time, but uh, Ohio Valley a big team. They've got some size, maybe not quite as quick early on. That's uh, Sawal sticking a foot in on Roach. Roach has had her hands full here in the early going and she just sails that one out of play. Roach is a Canadian player on this squad for Ohio Valley. And now here's Steinwasher who's pretty much the quarterback from the back for the Lakers. Pretty good ball there to DeHaan. And this is the player who's been overlapping a lot. That's a good ball through to Sagara. Sagara with some space. Nicely through to Sawal. Will she get there? Good anticipation by Kimberly Mora. She saw that one setting up. And she perhaps got the license plate of Corey Sawal from that last encounter they had, which resulted in Grand Valley's first goal here today. Sagara is going to get on this one. Just a little clever shield. Oh, a little nutmeg there by Sagara. Second player came over and helped out her. She was on her way. Oh, that was beautiful. Here's O'Donnell again. Steinwasher, the sophomore, All-America player last year in her freshman season. Didn't start the first game of the year last year, says Steinwasher, but started everyone after that. She became a dominating defender in Division II soccer. Ham going after this ball. Absorbs the tackle. Nicely done by Mads Ham. Learman. Barron on the outside. Nice step through by Katie Barron. Can she make it uh, two moves? Well, probably would have done well with a touch to a teammate there after making the original play. Not any space right now for Ohio Valley. That's problematic. And if Grand Valley gets the next goal, they're going to have to make a determination whether or not they're going to open up a little bit more and be a touch more daring. That's a throw to Grand Valley in front of the fans. Across the way. Over 15 minutes gone in the first half today on ESPN3. Tom Cleary with you from Allendale, Michigan for this women's Division II soccer battle. Grand Valley looking to move up a little bit maybe in the standings. They were very impressive Sunday in their win against the University of Missouri, St. Louis. Grand Valley another game coming up this Sunday at home against Bridgeport, which played earlier today. The team from Connecticut losing out to Ashland in a game that was played on this field. It was Ashland winning that contest. Danny Krispinski and his team coming up to a place where they're familiar. Talking to Jeff Hostler, the Grand Valley coach. Originally, that was supposed to be the uh, Texas A&M Commerce team coming up to play. They had to pull out several months ago, and so Grand Valley filled in with Ashland 
playing uh, against Bridgeport, which is going to be here for a game on Sunday. This is a shot from distance down at the feet of Jessica Raddus. Doesn't even have to pick it up to play it back out. And now this is for Grand Valley Wenslaff. Nice change of play on the left side. Grand Valley wants to attack on the left side. They've got some people that can do it well. Sagara still chasing on. Sagara, a little speculative there. I think she was hoping that uh, she could just noodle that one through for Maddie Becker, who timed her run pretty nicely, but too much on it. Win carried that one on to the goalkeeper. Here's Grand Valley again to Han. She'll go back to Wenslaff. Here's DeHaan again. Oh, she had Learman, but a nice ball outside to Ham who gets forward. Ham got a heavy touch. And they're going to call a foul on the defender who got on top of Ham. And there was a little bit of a comeback at the official here. I don't know. Is he going to produce a card? I don't think so. He is having a talk over there right now with the Ohio Valley player, Louisa Garcia, the sophomore. Cigar is getting the conversation, but only because she's going to take the free kick, I'm sure. This is a very dangerous area. Let's see who sneaks up there for Grand Valley. You've got Sawal on the far side. Also O'Donnell. Might Cigar go short and play back more toward the middle of the box? I don't think so. I think she's aiming for that far post here. The official will move back players a couple of extra steps. And this is where uh, Rico Cigar has been just dynamite. You wouldn't put it past her to try to shoot from here, but I think Grand Valley is going to try to get onto a cross. Great ball in and... Learman had to nod that one down. She was onside. Did the official blow for that one before? Learman was looking back. I didn't see a flag go off. Maybe it was a push off, but Learman got ahead on that. And that ball had been more shoulder height. I think she might have knocked it in the back of the net, had to dip down for it, and then spooned it up over the top of Kimberly Mora. This is a substitution that's not surprising. Roach has labored a little bit with that heavily wrapped left arm, and she is replaced by Ashlyn Jensen, who is a freshman who checks in. She is from Corona, California. This ball comes back to Steinwasher. Steinwasher is just going to put it into a kick and chase situation right here. Sawal back on Jensen. Nicely done here. DeCosta. Boy, good take by O'Donnell. O'Donnell jumps through the hole. Very nicely done. Put a defender down. Still to the byline. Cross. Oh, almost an own goal there. That ball was deflected by the defender. She did the right thing, but Morrow is out to sea. And that one, had it been on goal, would have trickled right in. The goalie wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. We see it again. There's the touch into the side netting. A good yard past the post. But a corner here for Sidney O'Donnell. Good height on this one. Can Grand Valley get there? O'Donnell might get a second bite of this one. She will. O'Donnell went through the legs of the defender. That ball's still alive. O'Donnell lost it. Almost came down to hit her in the head. And this ball, Steinwasher, alert. Sent some frustration right now, the Ohio Valley. Grand Valley's attack has been relentless. This is going to come out in the middle of the field to Ham. Ham's right in the middle of the yard, a place she usually doesn't get to. Gave it up a little too quickly there to Becker. Now Barron. Ham again. Good one-two played here with Ham. Can she get back to Barron? To, uh... The Grand Valley attacker couldn't do so, but here we come back now with Wenslaff getting chased there. Now that's a bad tackle there, senseless really. Jeff Hostler doesn't like that. The ball's long gone. John Crumb looked at it. I mean, there's just no point. Not even close, and the spike's up to boot. Bad all the way around. Jeff Hostler just staring out there right now. You can tell he's not pleased that there was no card brandish in that situation. I mean, late and a high boot to boot. Ham now. Grand Valley with DeHaan. Barron had checked her run. She's going to get on the ball a second time anyway. Learman let it go through. Was waiting for Becker to get back. Well, Grand Valley has not had coordination in the middle between the two outside players 
and uh, Madeline Becker just yet. That is normally Cook's position, but even she's not fully acclimated after taking over for the Division II Player of the Year, Gabriella Mancati, who occupied that spot for well, probably three full seasons at least, maybe even part of her fourth. Good play out on the left here. O'Donnell looking to go again. Segarra dispossessed. That's fine, fine work there by Anna DaCosta on the deck, just able to sweep it across for her team to keep possession. O'Donnell, good tackle there, good step in by O'Donnell. Right down below. This will be Jensen stepping up. Shoulder to shoulder charge there, and then the late little touch in there, taking it out of play. And this will travel all the way down to Steinwasher. Steinwasher, O'Donnell. O'Donnell's been very, very active today, looking for Becker. Let's see if Steinwasher comes up to win this one. She doesn't, but well, Grand Valley had it, but uh, overrunning the play a little bit was DeHaan. Ball into the middle of the 18, first hint of a threat for Ohio Valley. And now Becker, and a change of play to Learman. This is Katie Barron now. Becker moving up on the play. Barron telegraphed that move maybe just a touch, easily cut out by the Fighting Scots. O'Donnell didn't go for that one, and it falls to Miladies Sains. And now Medina. A little tussle there, and the ball played back to Radis. And now Steinwasher. Steinwasher's got a great leg, and her side is moving with the breeze right now. Wouldn't be surprised if she tries to go long here. Grand Valley wants to play out from its own end whenever possible. Dehan. Sagara. Sawal now in space. Corey Sawal stuck it out there for the defender, and Anna DeCosta was all too happy to accept. Balbuena. Grand Valley about set to make its first substitution, and it is Ava Cook, and that's a foul that might allow her to get into the game. Grand Valley's going to get a couple people in right now. Actually, it's going to be maybe as many as three. Kate Rivera is one of them down below. McKenna Schoolman. So we could see a couple of changes on the back line. They're not going to get in right now. And, of course, Ava Cook will be another player that will come on. And I suspect that Ohio Valley knows about Ava Cook. 13 goals as a freshman last year, and she was a featured performer for Grand Valley. Lakers make a stab at that one. That ball is going to roll out of play, throw into the Lakers. Could this be the substitution? It will be. So Grand Valley gets Rivera in. She replaces O'Donnell at left back. Cook is in up front. And also coming out is Mads Hammett right back, replaced by McKenna Schoolman. Schoolman, the sophomore from Aurora, Illinois, playing it right back. Coaching staff with high hopes for her this year. Wenslaff, first touch for Schoolman, and that's a predictable result. Ball bobbled up a little bit. She didn't get in front, and that's a wasted possession for Grand Valley. Kind of the baseball equivalent of uh, getting both hands down and squeezing the legs closed on a ground ball to shortstop. Schoolman just a touch casual, didn't get a good bounce and lost it, but Grand Valley's got it right back. And now Ohio Valley with all their attackers, well, they were momentarily anyway, in the Grand Valley attacking, uh, I should say all their field players, and Grand Valley's attacking in. Rivera's not going to quite get there for that one. Wind really starting to blow out of the northeast right now. A decided advantage for Grand Valley, which probably doesn't need an advantage at home very often. But the Lakers have scored just once. Corey Sawal with the early goal from Learman to make it one nothing. But at any level of soccer, it's not usually the first goal, but the second goal that changes the complexion of the game. Grand Valley is not likely to give up more than one or possibly two at home. So if they get two here today, Ohio Valley knows that they're going to have to get very busy. It's a team that was held to one goal in each of its first two games, had four in its win against Alderson Broadus. And that's a tussle there with Ava Cook going down. To me, like she got belted in the jaw. Got back up, though. This is played on to Schoolman. Schoolman is just going to send it up to Cigar. What a nice touch by Cigar to take that 
Down with the outside of the foot. Here's Cook now. Cook is physical. Nice tackle there, though, made by Anna DaCosta. Timed it nicely. And Cook was trying to lob it over the top and get past her. Here's Sawal, ran right into traffic. Should have gotten the ball first and pays the price with the loss of possession. Nice step in there, very nicely done by Wensloff. Now Schoolman. Grand Valley hasn't had much luck attacking up the right side. They've preferred the left. And here come the Lakers again up the left. Rivera going to have to hustle to get onto this one. She'll just do so. Jahan. That was Learman. Now Schoolman in some space. Looking in the middle of the park, here's Cigar. I tried to head that ball on, not quite sure why. There was really not much help there. Kind of had an idea and just stuck with it, even though it probably wasn't the best option. Right, really having some problems right now, breaking down Ohio Valley with so many people playing back. And here's Cigar. She, that's one where she could have dummied it and taken off, but she waited. And then the defender, Medina, got in from behind. Learman now. That's too far for Sawal. Grand Valley wants another goal before the half, and Ohio Valley knows they can't give up another one. DeHaan got a toe in there. Cigara is the one that knocked it away. One, two with Cook. Learman. Ball just not behaving for the Lakers right now. Here comes Ohio Valley, and great work to get back there by Grand Valley. That was Barron who tracked back. Steinwasher, Eva Cook, good take there, and that's a foul. Good tough play by the center half, DaCosta, the junior, but Eva Cook is a player who can make things happen in that situation. She can hold her ground. Grand Valley is going to get Darlene Rademacher into the game. She's played pretty well recently for Grand Valley. This is the ball that's onside for Barron. Chance to cross, it's there, Cook! The header off the crossbar. Still in a danger area. Boy, Ava Cook measured that one perfectly, beat the goalkeeper, needed it to be about six inches lower. Steinwasher. Looking for Sawal, and again, Grand Valley just not able to get on the ball, and Teams seem to have worn down a little bit from this. Let's see it again. Cook comes in, powerful header. Got the top half of the bar, to be fair. And now Cook's on it again. Good take there by Ava Cook. Strong on her left foot, but she's on the right side right now. Now she works back to the middle. Trying to get ahead of steam is Cook. Look out. She's dangerous here. Cook! And the goalkeeper again coming up big. And that was a fantastic bit of work by Ava Cook. Took on three different defenders, jockeyed her way back into position. And now Grand Valley's going to make some substitutions here. Here goes Cook again. She's like a runaway train right here, and this ball's got some heat on it. Rademacher will come in. Also, Olivia Trombley in back. She's going to replace Jihan. So actually... Who's going to move up? Is it going to be Seth Steinwasher moving up into the play? That would be appear to be what Jeff Hostler has in mind. Here goes uh, Cook again. Kept that ball live. Rademacher hit the deck. Now the referee, I think, said that ball might have been handled by Darlene Rademacher. Grand Valley in the back will have Schoolman, Trombley, Ribera, and who else is back there right now? I'm trying to see who else it is. It might be... Well, it's Wensloff still in there. So Steinwasher moves into the holding position for the Lakers. Grand Valley with Cook, Sawal, and Barron up front. Barron tried to time her run. The ball didn't arrive. Rademacher's a pesky player in the middle of the field. Watch this battle right here. 
not going to give any space to Paula Valbuena. That ball's down on the deck. Steinwasher got there. Montserrat Grau got on it. And now Winslow. Here's Trumbly. Sophomore from St. John's. And that's just kick and chase for Ohio Valley. And they don't appear to be the kind of team that's built for that kind of strategy. Hanging in there right now at one nothing down, but they've shown very little in terms of attack against this Grand Valley team that has played with the win. Perhaps Luis Rincon just waiting for things to change in the second half. That's a loose ball played by Trombley. Grand Valley's got players back though. Here's Steinwasher coming in hard. Steinwasher's got to get back over there on Medina. That ball's through into the 18. Grand Valley's got to get some people back. Hooked in there and went right through the legs of the Grand Valley defender. That's a goal kick. Yeah, that wasn't touched. You could see it from my angle that the attacker just tried to touch it off Grand Valley's defender, but it went right through the legs here. I think you'll see. Pretty fortuitous, but the wickets opened up just in time for Olivia Trombley. Steinwasher now. Down to the final 12 and a half here in the first half. This ball's too far for Cigar, not far enough for Cook. Grandelli has not been quite as good in the last couple of minutes since all the substitutions have been made. Rivera giving chase here. Maybe the Lakers have been lulled to sleep a little bit. Sains trying to go on Rivera. Rivera's got to be careful. Put herself in a bad way. This one's too far for Giano. Barron chasing back there, and then the player goes down on the edge of the 18. Rincon, I think, wanted a penalty. He's not going to get it. It'll be a free kick. Well, fall into the area. You never know. You might get the call. Granville conceded a very awkward penalty against Bellerman out at the top of the 18. The player having their back to the action, and Granville was called for a handball, which... The video pretty conclusively showed later was not a handball. This is by far the best opportunity of the game for Ohio Valley. Playing in its fourth game of the season, still unbeaten with a win and two ties prior to this one. Grand Valley sets up the wall. Radis is going to have to be careful. That sails high. She was in the general vicinity, but that was uh, plenty of steam on that shot. But from a very tough angle, it was going to have to be a perfect take. And uh, just didn't work out that time for Valbuena. This ball's touched on. Grand Valley wins it back quickly. Rademacher looking for some help. Trombley, Rademacher again. Trombley. Somebody's got to step up and make a play, and that's not what Grand Valley was looking for there. Trombley gave that one away pretty cheaply. Rademacher back defending, looking right at the ladies' Sains. Rademacher again, still out there. Cigar trying to help out right now. Sawal tracking back. And this is better from Ohio Valley. Getting Grand Valley to chase, and now Cook is going to get into the act, and it comes all the way back to DaCosta. And now Lauren Acosta on the other side. Laura is from uh, Colombia. Ana DaCosta from Costa Rica. That's a throw for the Lakers here with 9.55 left in the first half. Grand Valley will get a substitution on. It'll be Greta Deloach. Coming in for Sawal, Deloach, according to her coach, had the goal that was the pick of the litter last Sunday against Missouri-St. Louis. Pretty intriguing player, this one. Freshman from Gross Point, Michigan. Kind of a live wire in the attacking zone, playing on the left right now. Grand Valley, I think it's fair to say, has not been as good since Steinwasher has come up from the back line. What do we have here? That's going to be a foul against... Darlene Rademacher, who did well, put herself in the way, stopped the play at worst. And that was kind of a 50-50 call here, both players shoving. 
Grandelli not complaining too much about the call. And Valbuena steps up to take the free kick from a long way out. Probably somewhere in the area of about 40 yards away. She's going to go for goal, get it toward the 18. Touchdown by Rivera, but not very convincingly. Valbuena again being given space. This high lob is going to carry up over the top of the frame. Grand Valley will make another change here as Lauren Ross will get into the game in the middle of the park. I suspect, actually, she's going to come in for whom? Grand Valley is going to make a change on the back line. It's going to be Trombley going out, Steinwasher going back to play in defense, and Ross, last player on the team a year ago, generally making good progress, moving up the pecking order a little bit. She's in again to play in the middle of the field. She'll take over the holding position, which is a job that's still kind of up for grabs a little bit. I mean, they've played uh, Haley DeHaan, but Ross would like to put herself into the mix. Grand Valley gets another man on, and Cigar is just grabbed there. I, I really don't have any idea why the official doesn't call that. When you see somebody get grabbed by the arm, he plays the advantage, but nothing came to it. That ball should have been drawn back. That's off the head of the player, Paula Valbuena. Here's Ross now. Ross feeling a little bit of the pressure. Nice ball played through to Cigara. Into the wickets of Rademacher. Does well to play ahead, but this is going to get onto the goalkeeper. That's better there. That's, uh, I think, what you get a little bit from Ross. It's more of a direct player. She was aware of the pressure. She released it at the last possible moment, but when you do that and you make a connection, that's how plays start to get made. That's Rademacher who got up in the air, touched that one down. Seven minutes and change left here in the opening half. Grand Valley one, Ohio Valley no score. Corey Sewall from Tara Learman for the Lakers. And uh, Grand Valley's had a couple of opportunities since. One off the crossbar, a header by Ava Cook, who's on it right now. And then Cook later again, weaving through traffic to the top of the 18 and blistering a shot that was parried away by Kimberly Mora. Grand Valley's going to keep that one in momentarily. Well, they keep it in for longer than that. Cook gets a touch. And here's Cook looking to take people on again. Lost it, got it back. Tried to fight through another tackle there. Unable to do so. This play is going to be onside. Grand Valley's got to get some people chasing back. Valbuena had to hold up for that ball. Touchdown by Sagara. Rademacher now. Rademacher steps through. Nicely done. And now Sagara. Now Grand Valley with numbers. Boy, that ball's got to get up in the air toward Greta Deloach. Sagara doesn't make very many bad plays, but she missed out on a chance right there. That ball is just played out. And Luis Rincon is down there trying to argue with the official, but they're not having much of it. That's just a good, healthy challenge both ways. Ross couldn't get that one down. Got some help here from Kate Rivera. Nice spin away. Once again, a player down on the ground, and the referee's looked at it, and he's not doing anything about it this time. Here comes a shot by Rademacher, just wide, and now we'll come back and check the injured player. And the trainer for Ohio Valley is going to run back out, and we saw this earlier when I think Mr. Crum stopped to play a little bit too quickly, and once bitten, twice shy. It works if you're a referee that way as well. Player goes down and holding her head this time. Maybe had a little more of a case for stopping it here. And Ricon is still not happy, but to some treatment given to his player who's down there. And I suspect she's going to be okay. Starting to look like she's starting to get her win back. I believe that's Sains down there for the Fighting Scots. know if we're going to see what happened here. It's just a challenge. Well, she banged into the back of Kate Rivera. So the injury was not of anybody else's doing. Might have been she just got into the 
shoulder blade or something like that. Rivera didn't even feel it. She just kept on playing. But it was up around the head where the player seemed to be feeling that a little bit. And as a result, they're not taking any chances here. Well, Ohio Valley's got people warming up right now. I'm not sure if they're ready to make a substitution. Grand Valley will make a change, though. Chelsea Graves, freshman from McHenry, Illinois, wearing the white bandana, will get on. Rincon talking to Crum, and it will be Milady Sains, the freshman from Bogota, coming out, holding her right ear. Now, Rincon's trying to get a little bit of time for his team. He will make a substitution. John Crum just asked him pointedly, are you replacing her? And uh, John Crum has gotten already to the end of his rope as Grand Valley makes a change with Chelsea Graves coming in on the right side, replacing uh, Katie Barron. And they do make a substitution, Ohio Valley. Looking down, trying to see who it is. I believe it's Kishira James, the senior, who has come in. And she's playing up front, which we're, we were not expecting. She's generally a backliner. Ohio Valley with it here as we tick down to five minutes left in the half. Can Grand Valley get that second goal to put some space between itself and the opponent? The Lakers have had most of the play, as expected at home. On the band over there trying to get people moving a little bit. Schoolman. That's a good take there by Graves. Graves on the outside was dragged down. Tight little window. She got through it. Was fouled and heads to the box. And I think it's going to be Steinwasher here who's got the big leg. We'll tee this one up. Cigar is in the area. Also Deloach, Graves. And of course, don't forget about Ava Cook. Could Grand Valley beat the offside trap here and maybe go up the line? I think Grand Valley's going to try to send this one into the mixer to the top of the 18, and there was really nobody there. Chance to counter here for Grau. This ball's thrown out in the middle of the yard. Rademacher got a touch. Mona Medina. This is going to fall for Graves. Graves tried to play through. Rademacher was... Clearly on side, but she was backing up, and I'm not quite sure why in the attacking third. She probably should have been going forward. That ball's back heeled out of play. Grand Valley with the throw. Now they've got Cigara. Cigara's got some space. Cigara through to Cook. Just too much on it. That's that wind-aided ball right there that uh, probably has confounded Grand Valley a few more times than you'd expect. Wind coming pretty heavy out of the north northeast, and there's a game played earlier that I mentioned, the University of Bridgeport against Ashland. Maybe the grass has been camped down just a little bit, and the track is a bit faster. Rademacher, nice move by Rademacher. Still on it. Rademacher, well, the last touch to get there, she had to throw herself into that one and hit it too far all the way to Mora, who gave up the goal to Sawal. It's been tested a couple of times. But has held her team in there at one nothing. Rademacher did not get a good touch on that header, but Grand Valley's going to win this ball. This will be Deloach now. Deloach trying to get over the top to Graves. That could have been problematic. A bad bounce there for Ohio Valley, and Grand Valley's got a player in on goal. Now Valbuena. She's probably seen more of the ball than anybody today. Grau, Valbuena again. Caitlin Rivera being challenged here by the substitute James. Good take by Caitlin Rivera. And a good ball to Deloach. And now Steinwasher. And now Cigara. Let's see if Grand Valley can make it happen. Can they get back to Cigara? Just too long on the ball there. One or two touches too many for Deloach. Grand Valley tries to play over the top. Lakers giving chase with Cook. 
That goes out of play at the halfway line with under two minutes to go here in the first half. Grand Valley one. Ohio Valley no score today on ESPN3. Rademacher thought that was going to be presented to her. It wasn't quite. Lauren Ross now. Where's she going? Ross still on the ball. Tried to get a touch. Just ran away from her again a little bit. And then she clashed in there with the defender, Ana DaCosta, who might be hurt. That was one of those unavoidable wicked collisions. DaCosta trying to walk it off. But the Grand Valley player got into her a little bit. And looks like it's the left leg. Now Valbuena. Giano down to a minute remaining here in the first half. Ohio Valley has done a good job of shutting things down. They've not done much going forward, but they have weathered the storm playing into the breeze. Can they hold Grand Valley off of the final 50 seconds here? Grand Valley's not committing people forward at this point of the half. Here's a ball over the top that Steinwasher's going to have to get on. Let's see if Deloach can do anything here. That's headed out of play. Throw in to Grand Valley with 35 seconds remaining in the half. Rivera would like to find Cigar. She might have to settle for Rademacher. Rademacher got a bad touch there. Second time lucky, Deloach. Now Cigar. Cigar goes by one defender. Played out. Grand Valley's probably not going to have enough time. It's going to have to be quickly here by Rico as the count begins. That ball played on toward Cook. Rivera just wants to belt this one forward if she can. That's all that's left to be done. But instead, she's going to let the clock run out, and that will take us to our halftime break. An early goal by Corey Swall off the feed from Tara Learman, putting Grand Valley in the lead at the intermission. It's Grand Valley 1 Ohio Valley, no score. We'll come back with more here today from Allendale, Michigan, right after this on ESPN. Well, it's a goal by Corey Sawall, the Grand Valley sophomore, that separates these two teams as we get set for the second half. A late return to the pitch by Ohio Valley. They didn't get any kind of warm up at all. Their players just went out in the middle of the field, got in the huddle, and said, let's have at it, which. That can work too. Generally speaking, you'd like your team to be out a little bit early to get acclimated to what they'll be trying to do. Grand Valley's gonna switch things up, it appears to me, that Cook will start in the second half here in the middle, replacing Becker, who got the start today. Grand Valley's also gonna leave Rivera on at right back, replacing Mads Ham. Barron will be up front. Cigar is in an attacking position with Learman. Lakers will kick off going from south to north. The breeze kind of coming across and from the east. And it was certainly, I felt, a little bit to Grand Valley's advantage in the first half, playing with the wind, but it is a, a bit of a crosswind. And we'll see who can get the next goal in this one, if there will even be a next goal in this one. As the two teams are back out, Kimberly Mora stretching out in front of the goal at the north end and first touch belongs to Grand Valley. Nice ball through here to Cook from Sagara. Cook still chasing on. She got eased out of the play. Got right back on the ball though did Ava Cook and she's all over the place at the moment. That ball is turned right into the path of Katie Barron looking for some help. That's too far for Rivera. Couldn't get there. Katie Barron just blasted that one out on the right wing trying to get the overlapping right back. Grand Valley's going to chase early. Let's see if they can make it happen. This is Haley Wensloff back on at center half. That's a good ball through to Cigara, but Cigara uncharacteristically didn't come up with it. Looked like she was going to be in some space. Nice takeaway here by Haley DeHaan. Back on at the holding position. Steinwasher, one of two Grand Valley center halves. Well, that was a ball that Steinwasher got away with, but only temporarily. It wasn't really a, a good ball through, and here comes Ohio Valley. This ball is going to be played back to Radis at the top of the 18. Grand Valley working out quickly. Dehan, now Rivera. 
Rivera, good ball to Cigar, who's in a little bit of space. She probably needs to go get that ball quicker. Cook now. Cook looking outside. Cook on the right foot. Oh, just parried away. Great blast. Second time chance over the top. What a knock that was with her off leg. So all got there. This is her weaker foot. And man, that's got some heat on it. And then it was Corey Sawall who came in and put it up over the top from a sharp angle. Grand Valley making a bid early for goal number two with the chase is on again here for the Lakers. We'll continue with the high press. Sawall, nice takeaway there. Gonna have to play back into the middle of the field, I think. Well, Corey Sawall's gonna turn and go. Good persistence by Corey, who's got the only goal, and then she ran into the Ohio Valley player who played it into touch. Well, that was interesting. John Crum looked at it. Could have really gone either way, and he just said play on, and Grand Valley players were quicker to respond. Player goes down there, and uh, again, we've got a player flat out on the deck. This is going to be a corner for the Lakers. Referee's going to come over and take a look at it, and it is DeCosta this time, and now we'll get a stoppage of the clock, and the trainer will trot back out onto the field again. John Crum is keeping his distance from players <laughs> and just about everybody else right now. He's walking all the way up the sideline to have a word with Joe Piccioni, his assistant. And there's a little bit of a discussion here, I would think, about whether or not some of these delays are intentional on the part of Ohio Valley. I don't know that you would say any one of them was egregious, but when you add it all up, we've had three stoppages now with players flat out sprawled on the deck and Grand Valley has been able to avoid any kind of injury issue. That, that is kind of random. It can happen either way, but I think right now that the discussion over on the far side involving the two men in yellow shirts over there is whether or not there has been any kind of simulation or embellishment on some of these fouls. I'm going to get another look at what happened over here in the corner. Here's the throw right here. Now, the Grand Valley player goes down and there's really no contact whatsoever. And um, you get a natural stoppage of play on a corner, but it wasn't a head injury or anything that looked that serious. Now, it could be a leg injury, so we don't want to judge too harshly, but We've seen in each of the two previous cases, a player that was down and stayed down for a while, got back up, left the pitch, and then sort of semi-miraculously was able to get back into the play very quickly. This is DaCosta, though, who actually had what I thought might have been the most serious injury of the first half. I think it was Sawall that, that went for a 50-50 ball, bounded up, and got DaCosta in what appeared to be the left shin She's a little bit woozy right now, and uh, they might be taking her directly on into the locker room. She can't go off the field on that side and avoid the uh, inspection of the official. I think the referee's gone over there to ask whether or not this is going to be a situation that requires a substitution. And Rikon is going to make a change. She's got a player up. It's Maria Chilito, the sophomore who comes in. She's from Cali in Columbia. And now Mr. Crum makes the uh, determination that a substitution is needed. Ana de Costa will come off and she's moving very, very slowly. Grand Valley's got somebody over there ready to take the corner. And let's see if we can tell who that is. It's not Sawal. That might be. That's going to be Sidney O'Donnell who moves up from the back line to take the uh, the corner kick here. Cook is in the middle. Grand Valley's got Barron right in front of the goalkeeper. She's not really what you would consider to be a threat in the air. Tara Learman is a threat. And she's backing up toward the top of the 18. You might see any number of people going forward here. I suspect that Haley DeHaan 
is also another potential target wearing 20 in black. We are finally at long last, ready to go again. Here is O'Donnell. Plays it in low, gets a bounce. It's going to come right back to O'Donnell. Will she get a better one in this time? It looks like she has. Ball headed down. Oh, a whiff. And then a miss kick. And people all over the deck. That ball's still alive. It's Cook who wins a corner, I believe, for Grand Valley. Oh, was that possibly O'Donnell? I'm not sure. But, wow, there's some great action in there the second time. Grand Valley was all over it. Looked to me like that one might get bundled home. But instead, it's O'Donnell again. Ball toward the top of the six. Tipped on. Up in the air just over the top. That time, it was Haley DeHaan who got there. And watch this one just completely confound Kimberly Mora. She's backtracking. I think she's beaten on the play, but that ball got up and over the top, and the Lakers miss out on a chance to make it a two-goal advantage. I think the players are enjoying the weather, certainly, for the first time this season. It's, it's just a beautiful temperature to be playing out there. You see fans with jackets and sweatshirts, but it's perfect for the people that are doing the work down on the field. Dehan, this is Rico Segarra. He hasn't really come to Rico yet today. Maybe here she tries from distance. We've seen her score from a long way out early this season. And that was a little bit ambitious, and I think Jeff Hossler is maybe making that point to Rico Segarra right now. They managed to find a jersey for Kimberly Mora to wear. I'm not sure if she had that on the whole time, just underneath her long sleeve shirt, but they forced her to play with a bib early. That ball almost got through to Sawal. Sawal's going to chase it down. Sawal plays it to Cook. And now Ohio Valley. Paula Valbuena going up the right side. DeHaan bundled into her, knocked her down. That's a pretty clear foul. Free kick here for the visitors with just about five minutes gone here in the second half of this one nothing game. Luis Rincon wants to get people toward the top of the 18. He wants to concentrate his troops here. Get them in an area where they might get a second time ball. That was a little bit of a shove there that the referee let go. Touch here puts Grand Valley in a bit of trouble. Wensloff ahead to Katie Barron and Katie Barron's on the move. She can run this one down. She does. Trying to use her speed. Gets a ball up toward Cook. That's touched out. Will it get out of play? Just. Goalkeeper came over, tried to send that across the sideline. Not able to do so. It's a Grand Valley corner with Sagara now coming up. Rico here will have some targets. Sawal at the far post. Cook lining up. Also DeHaan is in there. Pretty much everybody coming forward for Grand Valley except for Steinwasher and Wenslaff. Boy, somebody available at the top of the box right there. That's Caitlin Rivera. Let's see if she tries to get closer to the six. Cigar, pretty good. Gets that one up in the air. All sorts of traffic, and it's over the top, and it was Ava Cook. Judged to have fouled, I think, or just is that Mr. Crum calling for a goal kick? It was Cook that got the last touch, I'm pretty certain. Got to get that ball down on the deck. It can look pretty spectacular when you get it just over the top, and that was certainly a play in which Ava Cook did not have a free run at that header, but did well to put her head onto the ball there. And that was definitely troublesome for Kimberly Mora. Cigara gets the touchdown the first time. This ball coming back toward the 18. Grand Valley's got to be a little more alert. They're controlling the play, but Jeff Hustler now has walked all the way down at the end of his team's area where the players stay. He's trying to give some direction to his people. Sagara, nice takedown there. To Caitlin Rivera, oh, just able to keep it in play. Well done, Kate. Dehan now, Steinwasher. Steinwasher will always be looking in that middle area for Learman or Sagara. Now it's Kate Rivera moving up. And she's got Barron. That's a good ball there to Barron who stays on side. Dummies it, loses it, and gets it back. And now Rivera. Let's see if she can get a cross in. That ball 
not where it needed to be and chasing back is Haley Winslow. Dehan. Steinwasher, Sagara. Sagara tried to play around, but not getting the support really that she needs today. Rico Sagara. Rivera will watch this one go out at the halfway line. Eight minutes gone in the second half. Grand Valley has come close a couple of times here on this one nothing lead. Maybe this will be the chance right here. That ball hit Learman, or actually Sawal. Now Steinwasher. Grand Valley trying to pick somebody out in the middle of the yard who can get it and turn and redirect the attack. Grand Valley getting good width. Rivera now. Rivera, nice little move there. That's a clever ball. Dehan. Cook had to chase back to get on this one. Sagara. She'll win it second time. And now, Haley Wenslaw. Now DeHaan, boy, she had Cook, didn't see her, had the head down a little bit. Kate Rivera stays with it that time, got a shove from Giano. But Grand Valley remains in possession. DeHaan, just not incisive enough at the moment for the Lakers. Sagara still sticking her nose in. Luisa Garcia. Still not much though in the attacking half of the field for the visitors. Here's Sagara, nice take here. He's got Cook. Sagara steps through. Sagara with Learman instead goes far out on the outside. O'Donnell. O'Donnell got tugged down and the referee spotted that one and calls a foul. And this is an area where I think you might see Sagara be dangerous here. Steinwasher is kind of moving up on the play. Rico Sagara, boy, move that ball up. You're a long way from where the foul is committed. They're not going to keep you from taking it further back, but I think Rico should have been closer to the edge of the 18. She's just on the edge of her effective range right here. She's got DeHaan, Cook. Keep an eye on Cook here outside. Also Rivera stepping up, ball played low and not very effectively for Grand Valley. 10 minutes gone in the second half. Grand Valley trying for its third straight win of the season. This is better from O'Donnell. Nice step around there. Sydney has seen a lot of the ball today. Touchdown! Good header there by, it's Cook again who has been Dominating in the air. She's missed from close range. She got a good bit on that one there. If the goalkeeper had been out of position, that might have been a wondrous header from a long way out. Steinwasher, Sagara, and now Rivera. Get back to Sagara, not able to do so, but Barron does win the ball for Grand Valley. That's better. Sagara now. Here's Rico. Give it away there. And now on the move, Constantina Giano. This is Mona Medina. Valbuena. Loops it over the top here. Goalie trying to come. Great chance now. Shot on and Radis makes the save. Grand Valley got caught a little bit unaware. Giano got down there, but some good tracking back. Rivera was involved in the play with Wenslaff. And here come the Lakers again. Jeff Hostler did not like that breach of his team's defense moments ago. Really was a great chance and by far the best scoring opportunity of the game for Ohio Valley. Grand Valley got a little bit careless and nearly paid. Well, that's a big tackle right there by Haley DeHaan. Now Sagara. Sagara in some space. She's got Cook. Cook. Went through the wicket. She really couldn't get it on her preferred left foot. Game looking like it's going to open up a little bit right now. Ohio Valley has to do something offensively. Grand Valley just as determined to get a goal here. This is Paula Valbuena. Nice layoff there for Growl. Valbuena again. Showed it to Haley DeHaan and then took it right away. Grand Valley's going to win the ball here through... 
Cade Rivera just plays across the sideline for a throw in for the visitors. Garcia now. So try it again, moving up a little bit. Valbuena. Really Don has to be very careful with her. She's not real fast, but she's very tricky. Little push on Cigar right there. The referee looked at it, didn't do anything about it, and Radis watched that one sail wide. Grand Valley's going to make a change here with Rademacher coming on. I'm not quite sure where this one's going to go. It's Rico Cigar who's going to come out. Maker's got a little bit of spark to her. Well, she's got a lot of spark to her. She can be a player that can really get into an opposing team's gearbox and kind of foul things up. Good speed, very determined player. Grand Valley with a nice switch of play outside here. This ball's going to break all the way out for O'Donnell and now Steinwasher. O'Donnell again. Couldn't find Learman who's been quiet, had that brilliant pass to set up the first goal and then the nice takeaway there. Learman goes back into the play, gets shoved off the ball twice. And Crum, after looking at it, makes the call, free kick for Grand Valley. Quick restart for the Lakers. This is Haley DeHaan. Kate Ribera, Rademacher. Kate Rivera is going to catch up to this one. Ball to the edge of the 18. Nobody really there. Cook lingering, but was never going to get on that one. A few little drips of rain, it appears. Starting to come down a little bit. Not enough to bother anybody, but you can feel it. And the wind has stayed pretty robust. As we are nearly through 15 here in the second half. Half hour to go at Grand Valley today in this 1-0 contest. Katie Barron. Rademacher. The high press is starting to come here from Ohio Valley. Grand Valley's got to counter it. O'Donnell now. Outside, Sawal. Sawal with a head of steam. Corey Sawal, touchdown. Corner? No goal kick, says Mr. Crum. Ava Cook got a touch on that one. Couldn't tell, but I thought it might have been deflected on the way through. Grand Valley Band making some noise. They're trying to spur the team on. That ball from Kimberly Mora coming back at her quickly here. It's Learman. She saw O'Donnell overlapping but didn't have enough on that pass. This will break for Barron in some space on the right side. Heavy touch though again. And Grand Valley's bid to get forward is thwarted. Perrin will try it again, and again, there's just not much happening, especially on the right side. Grand Valley's got some people warming up, though. There's a little touch by Barron. He was kind of shoved off the ball. Cook is going to continue the chase. Dehan. Now O'Donnell. See if they can find Sawal. They don't. Sidney O'Donnell gets it back on her right foot. Chested down nicely inside the penalty area. Jahan now, this is going to come for Rademacher. Jahan, Wensloff. Sawal trying to make a run from the left side. had some trouble getting free in this one. She's a rather slight of build. And she's gotten a couple of rough rides here on the right side for Grand Valley. And the Lakers just not able to find that pass in the final third to get anything going. Here's DeHaan giving chase. Ball through to Cook. She let it run. Didn't realize that other center half was back there. O'Donnell. Grand 
Grand Valley, nice ball ahead here. It's Sava Cook in the channel on the left side. She might look to take on a defender here. Going to play for goal. That ball spilled, but eventually handled. Barron was there, but not anybody else. And that one was always going to be a little bit too deep into the six to be problematic. 18 minutes gone here in the second half. Grand Valley on top. One goal to none. Corey Sawal, the goal scorer in this one. And the Lakers find the second goal that would force Ohio Valley to change their thinking. They haven't done a lot going forward, but at 1-0, you're only just one good play away from getting back on your game and back into this one. This is Ribera now. Not a lot of space for Ribera. Almost got that ball through to Barron. It's going to fall instead for DeHaan. DeHaan steps through. Grand Valley's in that situation right now where they're trying to make the perfect pass. DeHaan with a steal, shot right on. Second opportunity, just sails wide from Cook. And what do we have here? They're going to call, well, the flag may have been up on the far sideline. Now it's the goalkeeper, Kimberly Mora, who took the brunt of this challenge. Here's the play by DeHaan. Not a great save right here, not that hard of a ball. And all sorts of people getting pummeled there. I thought actually Cook was toppled over. So now what happens? You're going to have to make a change at the all-important goalkeeper position. And here comes the trainer back out again for Ohio Valley. I think Mora is starting to feel like she's going to be okay sitting up right now. If you go back and look at that play, I think it was Montserrat Grau who banged into Ava Cook just as Cook was arriving. Cook then fell over the goalkeeper. Let's see it again. Actually, it's not. It's a Chilito. And this ball came awfully close to going into the goal. And if there's anybody that deserves one today, it is certainly Ava Cook, who did not start this game, but has come on to be certainly the most dangerous player for either side and, and uh, quite arguably Grand Valley's best player here today. So the goalkeeper is going to be okay. They're going to let her stay in. Referee is going to check and make sure with the assistant, Jim Kroll, over on this sideline. I'm not sure what the discussion is about, but I think that Kimberly Moore is still a little bit worried that she might not be able to take the kick, and she's holding her chest right now, and she's not 100%. I don't think it's a head injury, but something more into the rib cage. She's going to sit this one out anyway. And I think Grand Valley's going to want to put her under pressure as quickly as possible. With under 26 to go, Grand Valley's going to make a change. The Lakers will get Sawal into the game. Also, Trombley comes in. Ribera goes out. And also going out is Greta Deloach, who had gotten the start there in the second half. Headed down by Cook. Big challenge there against Lauren Acosta. Grand Valley continuing the pressure. They want to make this team play out from the back, and they don't want to allow passes to get through like that last one. Nicely cut out by DeHaan. Rademacher will step over there. Nice ball finds Wensloff. Wensloff was just going to an imaginary teammate. There was nobody to collect that one. Grand Valley comes in through Sawal. Now Wensloff again, and Grand Valley needs to be a little quicker here. Here's Rademacher in some space. Learman, Rademacher again. Rademacher got bumped off the play, a foul call. I think Tara Learman, though, might have been slightly at fault there. She was in space, tried to play a quick one-two with Rademacher. I think if Jeff Hustler had his druthers, he would have rather have seen his senior leader take control of that one. She hasn't been in space with the ball very often today and really not this season. Grand Valley with O'Donnell clutters into the defender. That goes out for a Grand Valley corner. Quick retake by Grand Valley. Nearly caught Ohio Valley napping. 20 minutes gone here in the second half. It'll be Sidney O'Donnell again going over. And Grand Valley's got all sorts of traffic in front. Ava Cook has been the biggest annoyance. It's in her direction right now. That ball's headed up over the top. 
Wasn't cooked that time though. It uh, actually came to, I believe that's uh, Trombley that was the one that was on the ball for the Lakers. As she hurries back into her central defensive pairing. Well, Grand Valley has had probably 70% of the possession here today, maybe even more, but not able to get that second goal that would probably, you would think, go a long way toward putting this one away. This is a nice move by Wenslaff. Great cross across the 18. It's going to fall down for Tara Learman just inside the box. Let's see what she does. Learman looking to go. Held it too long, and she's played off the ball, and it's a turnover Grand Valley would have liked to have avoided. Great run out now. Well, Grand Valley's got to get some people back. This is some superb work being done by Sains, who's come all the way down from the other penalty area and goes around a defender again. Still going is Sains. She's got to be exhausted. She has literally run the length of the field. Now Grand Valley's got to get a second or third player in. Sains trying to win the corner. Does not, I don't think, do so. Goal kick. Wait, take a break. What an effort right there, and you can see the long exhale there from Milady Sains. Freshman from Columbia. Brannis is going to come back and leave this one down for Olivia Tremblay. Certainly Grand Valley's been frustrated offensively, not looking nearly as good as they did against Missouri-St. Louis. On Sunday, they had a pretty good first half, but not as many chances here in the second period. Oh, that's a great ball ahead to Cook from Sawal. Barron coming up in the play. Rademacher. This is going to be a free kick for Grand Valley outside the area, and I think Rincon has something to be upset about this time. And it's going to be a yellow card. Let's see what happens. Does she win the ball? Well, she did win the ball. But she came down right onto the boot of Ava Cook. So a yellow card flash there. That's going to be a contentious moment of the game. Certainly, you can win the ball. That doesn't absolve you of any violations that might occur afterwards. But Rincon is saying, hey, she won the ball, and it's incidental contact after that. Grand Valley is going to put O'Donnell on it again playing from the left side. They're going to back up the wall a little bit. Is she going to go for goal or is she going to try to find Trombley? Perhaps Wenslaff on the far side. Cook is trying to get herself in position. Backing away from the traffic jam. Here's the ball in all the way through and just flailed out there by Kimberly Moore. It will be a goal kick, but uh, the goalkeeper was certainly adrift on that one. And here is Anna DeCosta turning to the game. She went out earlier in the half. She'll return for Maria Cholito. We have just gone past the halfway mark of half number two, and Grand Valley still holding on to a somewhat precarious one nothing lead. It's Rademacher who got a touch, now Cook. Boy, great ball by Cook to, to Sawal. Sawal tried to take on one too many defenders. This is going to go across the sideline. Grand Valley had Learman wide open across the way on the left if Cook had been able to identify her in that position. Here's Barron now. Steinwasher. Trombley, last player back, has to make sure of her connection there. Learman. It's going to nudge this one on to Cindy O'Donnell. O'Donnell still going. O'Donnell still in the area. Cross there. The shot over the top. Oh, you got to put that one on the frame. That was a completely unattended header for Wensloff. And Jeff Hostler hangs his head. That is one you cannot afford to miss. Really no pressure at all. Wensloff looked up. and She was just home free right here. Just got to knock this one down. She's leaning back, but she's got to let that one travel into her a little bit. And it doesn't matter if it goes six inches over the line. But you have got to put that ball on frame. Completely alone in that situation. Grand Valley misses a great opportunity for a second goal. Here's Wensloff again. DeHaan. 
Trombley. Now Steinwasher. Grand Valley getting some width here with Wenslaff. Almost looks like Grand Valley's playing with three at the back right now. O'Donnell has been up in the play much more often. And again, that's a ball that's just touched away by Sawal. She's near the top of the 18, and I don't think her coach wants her to think that the first move should be backward and away from goal. Not when you're an attacker. Sometimes you'll get a player wide open, but every once in a while you'll see a team get into this uh, pattern of playing one-touch soccer and to their detriment. I think that's what happened to Grand Valley right there with Sawal at the top of the box. Grand Valley does not want to win this game 1-0. They want to press and get another goal or more goals. Here's Wensloff. This is Barron now. Barron let it go through her legs, but nice recovery made that time by Angelica Chavez, who's playing at uh, the left back position. Let's see what changes Grand Valley's making here. It's Cook is coming out. I don't think she's done by any means today. She's been I think, arguably Grand Valley's best player. Graves is on right now to play in the middle. Here's Darlene Rademacher trying to get a touch. Stood up nicely there by Lauren Acosta. That simply played out. It got a touch off the Grand Valley player. Maddie Becker, who's back in after being on the sideline for a long time. Let's see if Becker plays on the right or what. That's a foul throw, I think, or they're just going to call it back because the player had... Yeah, she moved up too far in the uh, official... John Crum caught it. Rademacher with some pressure. Becker knocks it down for Rademacher. Grand Valley's touch has betrayed it today on numerous occasions. Just heavy touches. Winning the ball. Grand Valley and giving it right back. Throwing for the Lakers here. This will be Haley Wenshoff with a great chance moments ago. Wide open on the header. Steinwasser. Now Sane's coming. Now this is Tara Learman. Pick out the right pass and didn't. Look for Cigara. It was not really available. The pass was too soft. Trombley made the decision to come up. She didn't get the tackle though. Steinwasher does win the ball second time. And again, a player down for Ohio Valley, but trying to get back on her feet and that was Sains who had that fantastic end-to-end -end run a little while ago. She was on the ball for about 30 seconds by herself. Steinwasher, 17 to go. Wensloff, good ball through the channel. But again, too far for Cigar, and the goalkeeper is alert to the possibility. This team's played pretty tightly at the back today against Grand Valley. The Lakers have been close through Ava Cook on several occasions. One ball off the frame. Seth Steinwasher is just going to volley this one back across the halfway line. Taken down by Monsalot Brow. Brow again, but loses out. And this is Graves now for Grand Valley. She's got a player going with her, but the Lakers a little bit too much on the ball in that circumstance. Now Wenslaff going back into the middle of the park. Change of play for O'Donnell. She'll get to this one before it crosses the sideline. Great cross by O'Donnell, but nobody there for the Lakers. Nobody really into the 18 when she sent that ball goalward. So 16 minutes to go, and Grand Valley knows at this point that they're just one bad play away from being pegged back here by Ohio Valley. A team that has not shown a lot in attack, but has played pretty courageously here and steadily at least on the defensive side of the ball. The ball comes in to Becker. Couldn't do much with it. It's been one of those games where a lot of people for Grand Valley in the attacking area have been on this ball a little bit too long. Look out. Opportunity here with Sains moving forward. Steinwasher chases back. Steinwasher still with her. Sains topples over. Free kick for Ohio Valley. Steinwasher 
found herself in a very bad position there. She lost the ball right at the halfway line, then the chase was on, and now it's Sains who's... I think she's just exhausted. She's not hurt at all. Referee stops the clock, though. Can he get a substitution here? He's going to make a change. Rincon. Actually, maybe it was just Grau who came over to the bench. Yeah, there is going to be a new player coming out. It's going to be Hannah Roach, who began the game at left back. She's been out for a long time. Her leg is taped, and she's got her arm in a cast, and it's going to be Sains, who I think her tank is just empty. She has run a long way here in the second half, and Grand Valley has to do some defending. Paula Valbuena from about 40 yards out with the wind. Jessica Rattis has to stay alert on this play. The substitution will not be made, and Sains is not going to be allowed to come back in for this free kick. She was the one that just went out that caused the stoppage of play. She can't get back in until the restart or until the referee comes over and tells her that she can get back in. Jessica Rattis is uh, under the con right here. This ball's going to be right on goal. It's up over the top. Rattis was smart, stayed back on her line, and she just measured that one the entire way. Grand Valley makes some changes. Mads Ham on for the first time in the second half. And O'Donnell goes out. Ham is going to play on the left side with Rivera on the right. Steinwasher and Trombley. Those two have to be very careful right now. 1-2 played right here. Ham is not going to get here. Grand Valley wins a throw. Grand Valley going quickly. Well, I think what happened there is that Grand Valley came up to take the throw, and Joe Piccioni realized that uh, that ball had glanced off a Grand Valley player. You saw the reaction of a couple of the players from Ohio Valley. They knew. Ohio Valley's opened things up right now. Grand Valley's got to be smart in attack. Good tackle here. A little shove on Learman there in the middle of the park. Wasn't appreciated. Wenslaff can't get on that ball. Well, the track has just been faster today or something because Grand Valley's seen a lot of balls run away. I think Grand Valley right now has to start thinking positionally. Trombley's got to be careful. Wenslaff put her in a little bit of a pickle. Touchdown here for Ham. Grand Valley on the run. Sewall. Good slide tackle by Ana da Costa. Grand Valley wants to go quickly. They're looking for Becker. Becker turns. Chance. Oh. Just not enough on that one from Maddie Becker. She could have probably waltzed all the way in toward the six there. She had some space. She turns the defender. She feels the pressure coming right away, so probably not a bad choice to shoot, but could not get it past Kimberly Mora. Trombley just belts this one down the field. Not a bad idea in a one-goal game. Another theatrical end to this play. It's DaCosta who's had some problems today. Toppled over by the behemoth that is five foot four inch Madeline Becker. Free kick here for the visitors. This ball's going to break for Cigara who's back in. She's just pummeled there by Milady Sains. Grand Valley wanted the quick restart. Stain jumped in. Grand Valley's got it through Graves now. Graves looking for Learman. Good ball outside. This is Wensloff. Can she find some help? Doesn't need to take on the whole world. Sawal might have been in an offside position there. Grand Valley needs to get the pressure back on. It's going to be Darlene Rademacher. Sends it up too high. Goalie spilled it. Chance for the Lakers. And Corey Sawall on her wrong foot belts it over the top for a goal kick. I think Rademacher is one of those players you'd like to have on right now because she's never going to stop running and she's very quick, persistent, and annoying if you're trying to play offense against her. 
Constantina Giano. Graves got a foot in. Nice work done by Graves. Can she find some help? Finally does. That's taken out. Grand Valley throw. Wensloff. Boy, Tara Learman has to turn around. She's right in the middle of the field with nobody near her. And that's going to be a foul against Grand Valley. It was Becker, I think, that got into the player that was defending. A little more than 10 minutes to go in this one. Grand Valley still on top, 1-0. But the Lakers, after a quick start, have not been able to capitalize. They've had some chances. They've come close several times. Mads Ham hit that one too hard for Sewall at the halfway line. There's only been one real good scoring opportunity in this game for Ohio Valley. But Radis came up and made a save, and that's been that. Sains right now dispossessed. Graves has been active during her time out there. Cigara for Trombley. I think Grand Valley wants to play long ball as an offensive tactic, but they do want to keep the ball in the other team's end. Boy, Wenslaff probably should have run through that tackle that time, held up, and... Now it's Angelica Chavez, Acosta, Lauren Acosta. Grand Valley still with pressure. Ham comes up from the back four with a turn and go opportunity, but good backtracking by Tara Learman. Learman is just pulled and thrown off the ball. Ridiculous foul there. And then a yellow card, I suspect, coming for Milady Sains, who rifled that ball out of play in disgust. I don't know why. Clearly committed a foul and then got mad, and now she is in the book. And a yellow card as well, I believe, for Luis Rincon. They all very, very senseless when you think about it. Just a, a foul that was completely evident, and then the player kind of lost her head a little bit and fired the ball at her own bench, which probably wasn't appreciated. Free kick here for Steinwasher. Let's see where she's going with this one. Is she looking for Becker? Possibly so. This is Maddie Becker right now trying to get a touch on it. This is all the way back and played out of play by Lauren Acosta. Grand Valley will move up. Barron is back on along with Cook. Becker goes out. Who else is departing the scene here? It's going to be Sawall. Our Rademaker's out too, I guess. So let's see. Was it three substitutions or two? Ava Cook on it right now. Her tank has been refilled. She might be somebody that can cause some problems here in the final nine minutes of this one. Haley Wensloff comes up to get it. Boy, there is Chelsea Graves. She was wide open. Steps through. Just too long on the ball, though. And that, that tends to be a little bit of a problem for younger players, freshmen and the like. People that they could beat in high school and in club soccer. Well... And they're not beating those people anymore. Players are better, positioning's better, coaching's better. Radis can still pick this one up if she wants, and she will. And then she shovels it off finally to Trombley. This is Ham. Nice move by Mads. Ahead to Cook. I think at this stage of the game, Cook just wants to hang on to that ball, consolidate position, try to play a pass off on the left side down there, and wasn't able to do so. Not smart play here by Grand Valley. They do get it back, and Grand Valley sends this one through. Can it get to Ava Cook? It will. Cook still chasing on after taking that ball from Deloach. Here's Cook again. Cook inside. Could this be it? Just over the top from Ava Cook. And once again, Jeff Hosser ruining the loss of an opportunity there, and again, it's a player not getting the ball on goal. Grand Valley's had four or five of these over the top. It's a good move here and a fortuitous bounce for Grand Valley. Back to the action, and what do we have here? Another shot over the top in a potential scoring position here for the Lakers, and that time it was Katie Barron. You can get all the velocity in the world on it, but if it's not on frame, it doesn't really count for much of anything. Cigara got shoved in the back. Graves with a touch. Barron got a leg in. 
Knocked out for a throw for the visitors. Seven minutes to go in this one nothing game. Wenslaff coming up. Chelsea Graves, Steinwasher, good play there. And then Cigar just gets pounded from behind and the referee just looked at it and didn't do anything. Chelsea Graves, the freshman midfielder, has been pretty good here in the second half. She's been physical and she's been pretty assured on the ball. Boy, that was one for Learman that Grand Valley got away with right there. Not so much on a foul, but just a poor pass. Graves again. Kept her head, Ham. Ham is bundled into, keeps it alive. That's a foul against Ohio Valley. With six minutes to go in our contest, Grand Valley clinging to this one nothing lead. Not comfortable by any stretch of the imagination. Seeing it out pretty well. They've not allowed many chances. Really only one here in the second half. It'll be Trombley on the restart. But if you're thinking about somebody who could score one for Grand Valley, the most likely candidate is Ava Cook, who's out there right now. This is headed on. Goalie going for this one. Can Grand Valley get on this ball second time? They will through Wenslaff. Wenslaff need to turn back toward the middle of the field here. Finally does. Graves. Graves in space. There's Cook back to Graves. That was a great play by Cook to keep the possession alive. Barron. Nice step in by Barron to get that ball back for the Lakers. She's got to get it out of her spokes there and move it on. Wenslaff. Graves trying to get on that ball. Grand Valley has to be careful right here. Steinwasher's a pretty steady hand, and now Cook gives chase. Will she get to this one? Tried to knock that across the sideline, but instead goal kick. Under five to go in this one. Grand Valley not home just yet. Lakers lead 1-0 on the first half goal by Corey Sewald today here in Allendale, Michigan. In this women's Division II soccer action. Grau. Ball coming forward here. This is Roach. Sains. It's a good switch of play on the outside. Jensen giving chase over there. Nice step over, but good recovery for Grand Valley. Well, Grand Valley doing some watching right here and giving a little bit too much space, I think, for their coach. He's probably not completely comfortable with that. 1-2 played through here. Learman couldn't clear the pressure. Nice possession now by Ohio Valley. We haven't seen a lot of this today. Grand Valley with almost everybody behind the ball. Chavez. That ball touched through a chance, maybe. Here's a shot, attempt, oh, the player went down. Referee just looked at it. Rincon thought there was a penalty. There was not much to that. And of course, rather theatrically, a player down. It's Giano down on the turf, trying to get a stoppage of action, which is not gonna help her team right now. She better get back up into the fray. Her team needs a goal. This ball comes back out. Grand Valley finally trying to win this one. And that's taken out on the sideline. And, well, Constantino Gianu is still lingering with that injury, and she got no love whatsoever. Grand Valley, though, is not done just yet. Trombley lost possession. Now it's Ham. This will come to Cook. Cook needed to get back to that ball. Boy. Cook called for the foul there with 2.45 left in this one. Grand Valley has to hold its nerve right here. This will be Paula Valbuena. The Colombian going to hit this from a long way out. Should be able to get it into the mix. Does. This is going to come all the way back out to Cook. And Cook's going to play it out wide to Wenslaff. And Wenslaff is going to head for the flag. All she has to do is get this one away from one more player. Continues on. That's good work done by Haley Wenslaff. And that ball is played way out of play there. And then suddenly and mysteriously a player goes down again. And it's Grau this time who is going to struggle back up. Lakers will make a change with Sagara coming out. And Haley DeHaan 
more defensive minded, a little bit more physical getting back in. Well, the riddle of Rico Segarra has been solved today by Ohio Valley, but they haven't really gotten out of this game what they want. This is gonna be Steinwasher volleying out of play. Two minutes to go. Boy, DeHaan lost track of Sames right there. That's not good for Grand Valley. Learman is gonna stay right with her. Learman's got the speed to do it. Now Valbuena. 90 seconds to go in this one. Let's see if Trombley can make a play for Grand Valley. She does, up into the middle of the yard, but Grand Valley not able to get on the ball just yet. Valbuena from a long way out. Radis will take this down on her feet. She's gonna let some time run off the clock very smartly. And she'll pick this one up. As we track down to the final minute of our game today. First time that Radis, I think, has put foot to ball in this one. Lanced on, but not far enough for Grand Valley. Rao, touchdown there. Jeff Hauser trying to get Ava Cook back behind the ball. This is Garcia. All played across the way, really nobody there. Learman probably could have taken that one down. Out to the halfway line with 35 seconds left. And now Cook. Cook is just going to chase down for the flag, I believe. She'll head a little bit left here. Continues on. Still going, Ava Cook. A shot there. She's going to take possession and head to the flag. We're down to the final 20. Cook keeps this ball alive. Player goes down. That's going to be a foul against Chelsea Graves. But probably not enough time left in this one for Ohio Valley to get all the way down the field. Five seconds remaining. This one is going to end a 1-0 Grand Valley victory. It was tough. They were a difficult team to break down Ohio Valley. In the end, a good game for both teams. And the Lakers make it three straight wins on the season for Ohio Valley, their first defeat after a win and a couple of ties to begin the year. So Grand Valley looked as though they might be on their way early on. But in the end, the Lakers just had to settle for the one goal here today against Ohio Valley, a team that was undefeated in the regular season. So this is their first loss during the year. Here is the goal right here. Learman coming through to Corey Sawal in the first half. Sawal makes no mistake with it, and Grand Valley gets the victory. So that'll do it for us here today in Allendale, Michigan. I want to thank you for being with us here today. For our broadcast crew, headed up by producer-director Bill Cuppy. I'm Tom Cleary. Thanks for being with us here today. This game is a production of ESPN. Our final score, Grand Valley 1, Ohio Valley nothing today here on ESPN.